final this last week, and uh, they're, we're excited for some of the upcoming changes, and they plan to rebrand that casino and and uh, hopefully start advertising and, and generate more business again. Uh, there are lots of Christmas parties going on this next week, so uh, you know I try to make some of those and and uh, just be safe and Merry Christmas to everybody. Can't think of anything else I've got, Scott. Nope. Nope. Good. Short and sweet. Uh, Fanny's on. I will try to continue with the short and sweet uh, approach. Um, Mr. Glenn says his regrets. He has a city, uh, our school board, so I'm here in his place. Uh, very short meeting for planning and zoning last week. Uh, all three of these items will be on your uh, January 6th uh, agenda. The, all three passed unanimously, but real briefly, the first one was um, the Ramsey Run Phase 1 development. This is Phase 1 of what will hopefully be six phases. Uh, this is out on Bloomfield Road, just to the north of the <coughs> um, and It was just their final site development plan. Uh, second item was rezoning at 623 Perry. This is right by Kappa Hall Park, just to the north of that former cleaners right there on the corner. Uh, that was rezoned from, or recommended to be rezoned from R3 high density uh, residential to a C1, which matches uh, the, the properties next door. Again, passed unanimously, recommended unanimously. And then lastly, were a couple exemptions to the code, uh, specifically related to a privacy fence and some of the plantings on the property. Uh, the request from Boulder Construction was to move some of those plantings that would have otherwise been on the parking lot behind their development to right there on the corner of Broadway and Perry to sort of soften that corner. Um, and so there was a, a unanimous recommendation or for the council to support that as well. Happy to answer any questions about it? Or... Do I have a question? No. Thank you. Appreciate it, Rich. Are there any appearances this evening for any item not on the agenda? Yes, sir. Hi, my name is Sean Poole. Um, I'm from here. I'm trying to keep it short and screwed like the rest of them. First, I would like to advocate the new bridges over King's Highway where the lady got hit and broke both of her ankles. Uh, I would also just like to ask the City Council for help. Um, I have, I'm from here. I grew up here. I've been in a lot of trouble here. Um, I don't get in trouble anymore. It's been three years since I've been out of trouble. But I've been copyrighted um, when I was early in age with no answers. Um, I've been tested by schools, colleges, copyrighted by multiple hundreds of people, uh, which it seems like everything that I can see. Um, I bought phones here. I've worked a real job here. I bought phones and went in and was told that they will resell phones or modified phones where people can root my phone and make administrator commands under my name, um, read and write text messages for me so they're coming out as me but not me. Um, this has been going on for two years now. Uh, I was formerly living in Dallas, Texas. I had a job. I did everything. I wasn't doing all the way good. I smoked weed. I went to the Oxford house for 18 months. I got out and I kept my job and this stuff started happening with the copyright and whatnot, which brought me back here and it's just gotten worse. Um, this is not, a, I wouldn't think, a matter for the police. It's, it's so big. These are corporations and I've been to eight lawyers here, nine lawyers in Cape Girardeau, and no one has told me they can help me. I've called their attorney general. I've called all of these people, and they said that they cannot help me. The Missouri State Bar Association, no one can help me. I'm pleading with you guys that maybe that you can help me. I mean, I'm from here. What it looks like is that I have a whole plethora of authors that are writing about me, about my life, which is intellectual property theft. You know, there's Matt, these things going on, and I really want to stay in this town, but it's, these people are making it very, very hard for me. That it's like I have to run all of the time, like I'm always on the run. I had a job. People started, t I thought they were taking stuff off of my car. They weren't. They were putting stuff on my car. I had gotten a wreck recently, and I, I didn't wear my seatbelt because these people were talking to me. They were taking stuff, putting stuff on my car, but my tires would stay low, all of them. I had a brand new car. I was driving down County Road 638 following a news van or a college van that's copyrighted me that I seen as soon as I said I was leaving Cape Girardeau on my Bluetooth. Could not use Bluetooth on my car. 
these things have been happening to me. Uh, they charged me with driving no license. I gave them my driver's license. I got that at 32 years old in Texas, and I asked, I'm going to Missouri right after I get this. Am I eligible to drive there? Yes, sir, you are, they, the DMV tells me. Here, they pull me over when I'm leaving the deeds office, inquiring about deeds for land down by the casino that we own, and trying to look into plat numbers. When I have developers and real estate people look at the paper and tell the plat numbers to somebody else on the phone, and then I, he gives it back, and then, uh, no, you know, just, you know, these things have been happening to me all my life. And I've taken up so much in, and I don't know what to do. But it's made me just to close down in on myself. It took a lot to come here. They were already tweeting about this online, that I'm reading in Russian, that I don't even know Russian, but I see it on my phone when it's coming through there, and that's why I can tell that that's what they're talking about speaking at the city hall, after I told two people. You know, and I asked them to come. And I'm getting no help from no one, and I am asking the city to please help me. That's all I have. I don't, I don't, uh, I don't know what the city can do. To, if, Renita, is there someone uh, that you're aware of, as far as maybe community counseling, that could help? Them? I think that we can there? meet together to try to figure something out. This is happening. This is big. This is a lot of money that will come to this city. This is very, very big. And I would like to stay here. Well, we'll work on it, okay, Sean? Thank you for having the courage to come and speak. I know it took a lot for you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you for coming. Anybody else for any item on the agenda? My first time uh, in city council, so I have notes. I tried to make them like. Would you please state your name? <laughs> My name is David Langley. Good evening, council. address? I am a local citizen and amateur YouTube creator. I want to start by saying I love Cape Girardeau. A lot of rich history here. Having sidewalks and crosswalks at Cape Rock Road and Kings Highway would most definitely improve safety for all. Not only the pedestrians, but the motorists too. I know there was talk about a bridge. I don't know. Seems like a lot of money, but something should be done uh, before somebody else is hurt. Uh, I'd like to address one more thing about the locked bathrooms downtown. Um, those bathrooms are for, for everyone. Uh, pedestrians, people go down there to shop, to visit Cape Girardeau, and now they don't have a warm bathroom to go to. Uh, some of the shops don't have bathrooms. You know, so locking that and putting out a, a porta potty is like putting out an outhouse. And just locked them at night or No, they're the, not locked. They're locked now because of vandalism. Oh, okay. Their toilets and the sinks have been okay. broken off. Have to be yeah, so when they're when they're broken, as sharp as is, we can't mm -hmm. keep them open. Okay, okay. So I hope that's where we get it fixed soon. Yeah. Thank you very much, Council. Right. And I will tell you that uh, there was other comments made that I've heard about the crosswalks on Kings Highway. That's a moda issue because Kings Highway is not a city street, uh, and that's something we'll have to take up with them. And we have had some conversations with them uh, previously and and today as well about. Um, Prioritizing and, and again, we work, we've been working with them at the at Independence and Kings Highway because we have a job coming there. But uh, we continue to have profit conversations with them about uh, putting a pedestrian uh, cycle in the uh, in the city to help the city. Mm -hmm. Okay. All right. Thank you very much. Thank you, Council. Thank you very much. Thank you. Anybody else? Any other appearances for items not on the agenda? So Pastor Ellen and I also wanted to address the same issue of the need for the crosswalks. And we recognize that that's a MoDOT issue um, in terms of, um, you know, process, but that the city, I mean, you know, these are, our, these are our people. And so whatever we need to do to initiate that process, however you need the community to help advocate 
um, for MoDOT to move a little bit more expediently than processes normally would move. Um, for our um, community that is primarily pedestrian, and that's their way of getting around, um, to know that one of their friends was critically injured um, causes each one to be, have to see themselves in that same um, predicament that it could have been any one of them at any time in that space. Now that particular crosswalk and, and when Crystal was crossing that road on Friday and, and was struck by the vehicle, she was headed to the meal at St. Andrews. And so with St. Andrews being a spot where um, people are served for essential needs, um, having some more safe method, I can't even imagine what it's like for the person who who struck Crystal and the trauma that they are also experiencing. Um, so something has to be done. And, um, you know. For you, let me ask you a question. Is there a particular time of the day where pedestrian traffic is heavier? Because, and I, the only reason I'm asking is because I live off of Cape Rock and I drive through there because mm -hmm. I go home some during the day four or five times a day, and I don't see a lot of pedestrians. So I'm just wondering if there's a particular time, or is it in, in the evening? Yeah, I would expect the evening to be more significant, mm -hmm. and, and particularly because it's so much more difficult to cross in the evening with the traffic. And then the dinner, whether it's dinner or celebrate recovery also, happens <coughs> in the evening. But now with people having to walk into the park to or into that way for court, and they're, so they're coming and going on foot to court. It also has increased some foot traffic. Um, and we've given people a lot of rides and people who are, who are afraid of really just walking because it's really just not adequate. You just can't walk <coughs> safely um, down that road. So. We'll do our best to reiterate that with MoDOT and see if we can yeah. deviate something. Yeah, so whatever process, you know, needs to be initiated that, you know, and, and as much as you're able to communicate with the rest of us how that process is coming, it's a lot easier to build confidence in our government when we're able to say, well, this is what they're doing. They had a meeting, they had conversations. And um, and not just kind of leave people feeling invisible and unvalued. Uh, Scott or Mayor, uh, if I'm wrong, it, the that intersection is that on the list for possible projects or, or for TTF six or was it no. a study? There was a study traffic being study. done. Uh, a traffic study. Traffic study being done there, primarily. I guess not from Cape Rock on the Arena Park side where Broadview comes down and it's a narrow congestion in the leads to the river. But it's, yeah, it's, Broadview, I mean, it's it's really right yeah, there. That whole right. area. Yeah. I'm sure if, they, if the approval was made, they would they would take pedestrian traffic into account and then that would die into that. Yes, uh, Mayor, uh, Council uh, Members, we did apply for and receive a TEEP grant transportation engineering assistance program grant through MoDOT to collect some traffic data at that particular intersection. Um, the mayor is correct, our focus is more on the arena park side of the intersection, but that has been a difficult configuration and in order to make any improvements, we really want to have more information about traffic movements, traffic um, amounts, pedestrian, all of the different movements that need to be taken into account. So the first step is collecting that data, and then I believe in TTF 6, we, the proposed project list, we did include a small amount to, to really take that data and study that intersection more. Um, again, with the focus being more on the arena park side where we have all the different mm -hmm. Broadview and Marie Louise and, and whatnot, but um, we are in the process of uh, doing some of that. And so I, I recognize that all of that takes time, a lot of time, and um, I don't expect that the use is going to decline while all of the studying is happening, so I'm not Sure, if there's some temporary fix that we can consider um, that would maybe even increase safety for people during meal times that are at St. Andrews, or you know, I'm, I'm sure people with a lot more information than I do um, have could come up with some ideas. Um, but as we're looking at this, and I know it's budget 
but they're related. Um, but it, it's, it's just hard for me to not ask the question or to encourage you to ask the question is when we're looking at cost benefit, how much is a person's life worth? And so, yes, the bridge, yes, the crosswalk is going to cost this, but what is life worth? And we, have, we, we sometimes have to remind people of the human impact of these financial matters. And you are the representatives of those who won't be able to be in that space. And so we're counting on you to raise that question with MoDOT and have them give an account for what is the cost of human life. Now, Crystal will likely recover in some way. But the cost even, if we're looking at the cost of life lighting her to BJC and all the surgeries and the rehab, you know, when we look at that toll, you know, like what is it worth? You, I, you know what I'm saying. I don't want to interrupt you, but sure. I encourage you, we have a simple meeting, which is the Southeast uh, Metropolitan Planning Organization. Uh, we meet this Wednesday at the mm -hmm. State Center at 2 o'clock, and there is a very on the agenda for public comment, mm -hmm. and I would encourage you to come there and <coughs> public comment about just what you're talking about so more I can hear it directly. Oh, definitely will. Um, okay. Yeah, and I'll need that information I give it, yeah. Okay. Um, so that's, I think that's it. We're good? Well, that's, that's what we, we wanted to come and represent people. It's, of course, it's the topic of conversation in our community. I know. And we wanted to give that justice. Okay. okay. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. I'll talk to you afterwards about that meeting if you want. Oh, perfect. Thank you. Uh, anything else? <coughs> if not, we'll go right into the agenda review. Scott? We have a uh, pretty short uh, agenda tonight. We have no public hearings. Uh, our consent agenda is uh, the second and third readings of those ordinances from last time, uh, followed by the final payment of the old asphalt overlay program. Uh, we have one new ordinance, which is the uh, issuance uh, of the uh, sales and delivery of special obligation bonds that we voted on last time. This is the um, uh, actual purchase of those, and we will need a uh, emergency reading of that for the first, second, third <coughs> reading. It does take uh, five affirmative votes uh, to uh, pass that in an emergency uh, under an emergency action. So. Uh, we will need to do that. We have three appointments tonight, uh, which I think you have input on, Mayor. Mm -hmm. And uh, we do have a uh, short closed session tonight. So uh, that's about it. Okay. Are there any individuals here this evening to make comments on any item that's listed on the agenda this evening? Let's go, let's go into regular session first. Take a roll call. Ryan Essex. Here. Mel Bach. Here. Ronald Gard is absent. Stacy Kinder. Here. Shelly Moore is absent. Dan Preston. Here. Nate Thomas. Here. I'll entertain a motion to adopt the agenda. So moved. Second. Any discussion? If not, all those in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Any opposed? We have no public hearings this evening. Uh, there were no appearances for any item on the agenda. We will go back to consent agenda. Over 19-187, ordinance man chapter 15 of the city code back sitting, the one half of 1% transportation sales tax and reestablishing the state transportation trust fund and calling an election in the city of Cape Verde, Missouri on the question whether to approve the sales tax extension, designating the final <coughs> holding the election, and authorizing and directing the city clerk to give notice of the election. In order to make chapter 15 of the city code by extending the one half of 1% transportation sales tax and reestablishing the city transportation trust fund and calling an election in the city of Cape Verde, Missouri on the question whether to approve the sales tax extension, designating the final holding the election, authorizing and directing the city clerk to give notice of the election. From 19-188, the ordinance proved the record by the Summers Castle Rock subdivision, or it's proved the record by the Summers Castle Rock subdivision. From 19-189, the ordinance proved the record by the City of the Hollow subdivision, or it's proved the record by the City of the Hollow subdivision. From 19-190, the ordinance granting a special use permit to Union Electric Company, DBA, Ameren, Missouri.
Missouri for purposes of constructing, maintaining, and operating an electrical power distribution substation at 1400 West Cape Cod Drive in the city and county of Cape Verde, Missouri. An ordinance granting special use from the Union Electric Company, DBA, and Missouri for purposes of constructing, maintaining, and operating an electrical power distribution substation at 1400 West Cape Cod Drive in the city and county of Cape Verde, Missouri. 119-191, an ordinance named Chapter 30 to put ordinances to the Cape Verde, Missouri by changing zoning properties located at 1205 South Mount Auburn Road in the city and county of Cape Verde, Missouri from M1-4. An ordinance named Chapter 30 to put ordinances to the Cape Verde, Missouri by changing zoning property located at 1205 South Mount Auburn Road in the city and county of Cape Verde, Missouri from M1-4. 119-192, an ordinance repealing ordinance number 4972 and dissolving the downtown Cape Verde or VA2 special allocation fund. An ordinance repealing ordinance number 4972 and dissolving the downtown Cape Verde or VA2 special allocation fund. We have before you a continued amendment. Move to adopt. Second. 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 Third. Nathan. <laughs> Any discussion? If not, all those in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Any opposed? That motion carries. New ordinances, Bill Number 19-193, an ordinance authorizing and directing issuance, sale, and delivery of special obligation bond series 2020 for the City of Cape Town, Missouri, <coughs> and approving certain documents and authorizing certain other actions in connection therewith. An ordinance authorizing and directing issuance, sale, and delivery of special obligation bonds. Series 2020 for the City of Cape Girardeau, Missouri, and approving certain documents and authorizing certain other actions in connection therewith. An ordinance authorizing and directing issuance, sale, and delivery of special obligation bonds. Series 2020 for the City of Cape Girardeau, Missouri, and approving certain documents and authorizing certain other actions in connection therewith. So moved. Second. Motion by Dan, second by May. Any discussion? If not, all those in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Any opposed? Motion passes. <coughs> we have uh, three appointments this evening. The first is a appointment to the Convention, Convention and Visitors Bureau Executive Board. And that, uh, I want to make a motion to approve John. Come on, Mayor. <laughs> e. Kinovich. Did I get close? I'm on a yes. <laughs> yes. Yes, we're close. Oh, yes. Yes. Right so moved. For, for John. John. Yeah, for John. <laughs> second. Motion by Dan, second by Nate. All those in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Any opposed? That motion carries. The second is the Formers of the Liquor License Review Board. Uh, there are three members, and one of these, uh, the current only person left from the Liquor License Review Board, agreed to serve as Chief Review Officer, and that was Brandon Cooper. Uh, the others, uh, according to your ballot, are Daniel Grimm and James Newman. I'll entertain a motion. So moved. Second by Ryan, second by Nate. Any discussion? If not, all those in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Any opposed? That motion carries. The other is uh, reappointment of two members to the Cape Area Magnet Board of Directors, and those two are myself and Robbie Gard. So moved. Motion by Dan. Second. Second by Nate. Any discussion? If not, all those in favor signify by saying aye. Aye. That motion carries. I'll now entertain a motion to adjourn the closed session to discuss legal actions and litigation, confidential communications, legal counsel, property acquisition, and personal matters pursuant to revised section, Missouri section 160221, 160212, and 160213. Second. Motion made and seconded. We are adjourned.